Hey there everyone, this is Danielle playing some more Spyro the Dragon. Uh, last time we did Clifftown and we finished off the homeworld, uh, as you can see from our little menu here. So now we're going to head down to the Ice Cavern and do that next. Do a barrel roll. Do a barrel roll. Do a barrel roll. Do a barrel roll. <laughs> Breathe the fire. It's kind of nice that you have these little gimmicky options to do stuff in the overworld. Not the overworld, on the load screens. Since the load screens are a bit longer than they were in the original game. Which is kind of annoying. Okay, here we are. So yeah, as you can see, it's ice. Uh, Spyro gets a bit slippy on some of the ice, so you got to be a bit careful. Typical platform affair, uh, pretty much what you would expect. And as usual, there's a bunch of gems we want to grab all over the place. And there's also these big yetis here, you can't charge them because they're big, so you just do some fire. Easy peasy. Uh, standard Spyro gameplay. Uh, these little guys, you can also use fire, they don't have any shields, so easy. There we go. Uh, did you miss any treasure there? No. Cool. Here we have a dragon. Word of caution, little one. Wait until you grow big, <clears throat> like me, before charging those large enemies. Yeah, I know. I'm familiar with how this game works. Thank you. <laughs> Those little guys have projectiles, so you want to take them out reasonably quickly so they can't throw anything at you. The big guys don't, so they're pretty easy to deal with. You can charge the little guys, but I think it's easier just to flame them, because you can get close without too much trouble. They're pretty slow. Oh, memories. Yeah, uh, this level. remember this being quite a thing. Those bats, how you get butterflies? Yeah, they are. Cool. Wasn't sure. Uh, so there's a couple of different layers here. You can see there's some treasure up there. There's also stuff down here on the ground floor. So let's head up and get this stuff. Uh, that is the locked chest, so we will need to come back for that once we've got the key. As you can see, charging it does not work. You can see it's got a big padlock on the side. Uh, so that that's something we'll have to work on. Uh, these gems, it looks like you can't reach them by jumping. Because you can't, but you can actually just charge this and it'll wobble and the gem will fall down. So, easy peasy. Here's another dragon. Spyro, some big norks up ahead are wearing armor, and in the ice cave, armor can make their feet very slippery. Hmm. So armor does conduct cold, since it's making them slippery, um, but not heat. Hmm. Anyway, what basically how it works is if they're big and they're wearing armor. But you can't use fire because they're wearing armor, but because they're standing on ice, you can still charge them and they'll just get pushed off. Easy peasy. Like so. Me. Welcome. That's all you had to say? Alright. Whatever. I don't care. Ooh, 
Ooh. Plenty of gems all over the place here. I think this is one of the more expansive levels uh, in this area, which is pretty cool. Get it? Because it's an ice cavern. It's cool. <laughs> uh, you can see the keys up there on that ledge, so we're going to want to get that. Uh, I think we have to get higher up to get it, though. We have to probably glide down to it from one of the higher ledges. Yeah, you can see that guy's attacks are very easy to dodge. Snowball very slow. Snowball more like slowball. And here's another guy we have to charge into because he's got armor, his feet are slippery, there we go. Easy peasy. You do have to kill every enemy because they are all made of gems, so you have to kill everyone at least once. Once you've got their gem, of course, they have pearls instead, so don't worry about it after that. Goodbye. Yeah, making making good progress. I think it's 400 treasure here again. Yeah, it's pretty much 400 treasure everywhere. Except the hub worlds, which have... Oh, and the ones in this level have less stuff, but... I think from now on it's 400 everywhere. Bats are kind of annoying, but they're completely harmless, so nothing to worry about. They're just here to give you butterflies if you want butterflies. You've done well, Spyro. Some dragons thought you weren't ready, but I knew they were wrong. I'm ready, all right. Uh, ready for what? Hey, answer my question. Come back here. Oh, he's gone. All right. Extra life. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff to grab here. Uh, we're getting close to the end though. If you look at our numbers, you can see we're quite close. Um, up there, there's some extra lives, but no actual treasure, so we don't actually have to worry about going up there if we don't want to. Uh, more treasure right here. Good because I can't really see how to get up there. Asher. I think that's the last dragon. Thanks for freeing me, Spyro. And Welcome. Now, where was I? Good question. Okay. Oh, this is where we were before. That's right. When we went into that cave. Alright, so we do still need to figure out how to get the key. I think the best way is to go back to where the chest was. Uh, so basically this direction. Uh, and then we want to go through here again. Come on back up here. This level's a bit too linear, I think, compared to some Spyro levels, which are a bit more playgroundy. It's not too bad, but it does make backtracking a little annoying compared to some of the other levels, in which case, which it's more fun. Uh, is that enough? Let's see. 
Yes, it is. Excellent. Okay, we have the key. Uh, and I think we have all the treasure as well that isn't, you know, in the chest that we're about to go open. So, I think that's everything. Good for us. Okay, the chest, you have to go up on this side part to get to it. Like this. There we go. There we go, there we go. Then we can look this. Yay, gems! I love gems. And that's everything, heck yeah! Yeah, you could actually glide from here to reach it as well, but looks of things. That would have worked. The way we did it worked fine, so that's okay. Okay, the exit is just around here, so let's just head back over there. Um, that's only 10 minute video, so I'm gonna do something else as well. I guess I'll go do the boss, uh, Dr. Shemp, since that hasn't been done yet. I don't remember what Dr. Shemp is like, so we'll see how this goes. Toasty is probably the most memorable boss in the game. <laughs> For reasons you might, might be obvious. It's a sheep dressed as a jackalatum. It's pretty funny. Anyway, uh, as you can see, we have a lot of treasure. I, I think you need like 500 treasure to advance past Peacekeeper's World or something. You need a lot less than we have. Uh, so we can advance without any problem if we want to go to Magic Crafters. Uh, anyway, Dr. Shemp is just over here, so let's go fight him. As usual, the boss level is just a small level. It's got, you know, a decent amount of treasure to get, but it's also got a boss to fight, and defeating the boss, you know, gets you to where the last little bit of treasure is. Uh, same basic deal as every other boss in this game. I think that was one of those skill point thingies in this version of the game for defeating Dr. Shemp, so... Maybe I want to do that. We'll see. We'll see. Um, that feels a little culturally insensitive. Hmm. Gonna have to kill you for that. Hmm. I don't know. It's like the most common indicator of a boss level is that they forget to put any healing stuff in it. Which is very annoying. Because, uh, yeah, there haven't been any, like, chickens or frogs or little critters that I can kill to, to get to get health of any kind. Oh my god. less treasure here? 300, yeah. A little bit less. But yeah, you can see there's, there's no little critters I can kill to get butterflies, which is really annoying because butterflies are quite important in this game. Uh, over here there's just the one purple gem. And it's a really scary glide every single time, and I hate it. Anyway, we've got the key, so that's cool. Uh... I believe the actual boss battle is up here. Yeah, the boss battle's through that way. Uh, first I want to go over here. Ah, oh, didn't quite make it. I think I can do it from here. Just give it one more try. Hmm.
Okay, um, I think I have to come out of that door maybe to do it. Anyway, I'm out of health again, so chances are the boss is going to kill me at least once. I'm just going to respawn everything. Uh, that's a little annoying. Also, getting gems is harder than normal. And yeah, I don't get the gem guide thing when I middle click because... I'm going to click when I click the left stick because Sparks isn't here. Hello. Dr. Shemp, this is so cool. You don't know what it's been like listening to him over and over. But I tell you one thing. He should watch his back. That's a hint. You have to attack his back. In order to defeat him. That's his weak point. There he is up there, by the way. Yeah, a little bit culturally insensitive. Not not the best thing I've ever seen. Um, anyway, uh, we want to go over this way. Uh, because there's a couple of chests, as you can see. But also, that's how you get over here. In order to visit this enemy, and therefore... <laughs> get reignited, yep, yeah, sure. So yeah, it looks like the main... Identifying quirk of boss levels is they forget to give you health items, which is just obnoxious. Mm, whatever. Anyway, um... I can't reach across that gap, can I? No. Oh, seriously? Okay, so you have to glide uh, just a little bit. Oh. I didn't even take damage. I just got knocked down. That's just annoying. <laughs> uh, at least damage me if you're gonna do that. There we go. Five gems? I guess that was worth it. I mean, I need all the gems, so sort of automatically worth it, and I have to go back around this way. That's okay. Alright, so Dr. Shem. Uh, basically, he's wearing armor on the front, but not on the back, so you have to wait till he turns around, and you can hit him. Also, yeah, he's a bit... questionable. Um, hmm. Hmm. Yeah... I don't know how I feel about the bosses in these games. Crash had the same problem. some very similar bosses to these ones with the same very questionable nature to them. In fact, the same sort of spinning as well. Anyway, gone. Uh, let's grab the treasure. There we go. And that lets us get to this last part, which has a bit more treasure. And we have the key already, so when we go down here to get the locked chest, we can unlock it straight away, and grab that gem there, that's everything, so this level is done! Uh, let's climb back up to get the exit, shouldn't take too long. Anyway, yeah, that's Dr. Shemp. Uh, a, yeah, somewhat mildly offensive, if not more so, boss, I would say, in terms of that design. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Anyway, that's 20 minutes. Um, I guess I can call out a video. I don't know. We've done most everything except the um, flight level, night flight. So, I don't know if I want to do those straight away. The flight levels are kind of annoying. I might come back to them later. Yay. Oh, interesting. It doesn't actually count. 
towards level complete, because it's at 100% complete when I just did all of those. Huh. Interesting. Alright, so I guess I don't actually have to do that. Alright, well, um, I'm gonna head on to Magic Crafters, give you a first little glimpse of that level. Uh, I walked near the balloonist earlier, and he did the dialogue for advancing. Oh, he's doing it again. Okay, so cool. For the Magic Crafters world if you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. So, same deal. You jump on his head, the balloon heads off. So yeah, I forget how much treasure you need, but it's a lot less than we have. Um, and the flight levels, there's only treasure, there's no dragons or eggs, but you do have to do it if you want all the treasure. Uh, so we will be doing those at some point. But apparently it doesn't count towards world completion, which is kind of weird. Since it said level 100% complete when we exited Dr. Shemp there, which was presumably talking about, you know, the Peacekeeper's world. Weird. Anyway, we'll have a quick look at Magic Crafters. We won't do any levels yet, just to get a get an idea of what we're looking at here. Uh, and then that's going to be a video, I reckon. Yeah, this this is kind of long. Um, Magic Crafters is probably one of my favourites in the game. It's got a lot of personality to it. Uh, it's also got a lot of water to watch out for, so you know, don't touch the water. Because uh, that's not good for you. And it's got some more folks with eggs here as well, which is certainly a thing. Hmm. You can't get up there at all, so when he's up there, you can't get him. Ow! Those guys are wearing metal, so you gotta charge him. Thanks. I want you to release the dragons, reclaim our treasure, and recover the eggs from those pesky blue thieves. Yeah, to, to clear this world, you have to get a bunch of eggs, which is why the guy is mentioning that he wants you to get eggs. There we go, we got that one. I think we already have enough, because there aren't that many eggs in the game, and we have six of them. I think there are eight or maybe nine. These guys are pretty easy to deal with. There we go. Uh. Okay, these guys are my favourites. You see, they, they build little, like, ledges and stuff when you get close. Which means if you try to go this way, you can't because this wall's been built in the way. Uh, so you have to try to go around or go fast enough to beat them to it. Which is where the supercharging, like, super fast charging I mentioned earlier go comes in. You can charge quickly enough to get onto a ledge or before they can build up the wall and stop you. Uh, this is the level, we won't go into it just yet, but we'll make sure we grab all the treasure around it. There we go. can't call in very quickly, which makes this a bit tricky. Woohoo! I think we're getting closer. Yeah! We certainly have enough eggs by now, since I've grabbed pretty much every one that we've got gone past at this point. Oh, uh, that's water around there, so watch out for that. You don't want to get wet, because water's bad for dragons. 
There's a sheep down there though, there we go. So yeah, you can see that this guy built up the wall earlier, but if we take him out like that, we can get through no problem with all the treasure. Easy peasy. Uh, with this one, you basically want to charge up nice and quick, like that, before he has time to build the wall. Uh, like so, and then he's gone, so we can't build the wall anymore. <laughs> Okay, here's one of these supercharged ramps I was talking about. Basically, if you charge down this ramp, Spyro picks up a whole lot of speed and gets super powerful. It's pretty cool. Also, he's a dragon. Who I think will explain the supercharged ramp to. When you see arrows like these, you can charge along with them to begin a supercharge. Supercharge? Excellent! Go ahead. Try it. Cool, I will. Thanks, friend. So yeah, you have to supercharge because you can't get past that wall otherwise. The guy builds the wall too quickly. Uh, once you've supercharged that first bit, it's pretty easy to continue. Another flight level here, which we may or may not do later on. Now it looks like water, but it's not. Yeah, or it is actually, but it's harmless. You can touch it, no problem. Dragon here too. This portal leads to a special place where you can learn to fly. I remember when I was a young dragon, earning my wings. Learn to fly. Got it. You can actually do the flight levels in any order, so you know you don't have to go to this one and learn to fly first, which is a bit odd because it sort of implies you do. Uh, here you want to get through here before that guy blocks like pushes you into the water You can just walk around on the other side um, And therefore completely avoid the problem if you want Which is kind of funny uh, This guy's just moving the platform up and down so if you get on top of it you're fine There we go uh, Then you have these weather mages which are a bit dangerous, but if you keep moving you should be fine Then there's the balloonist over here for recovering so many of our dragon eggs. Yeah, I've already got enough dragon eggs to go to the next world, as you can see. I'm not going to go there yet. We're going to do this world first, but yeah, it's it's not hard to get enough. Uh, this is the boss, I believe, Blowhard. Um, we won't be fighting Blowhard just yet, though. We'll get to that later. Uh, so if we go up this way, it's easy as just to walk along here. Like so. You can take out the weather mage there. Take out that guy. Uh, you can see there's one of those padded chests here. So we're going to need something special to break that. I believe a supercharge is what you need to use. So you have to actually go back over here and get the supercharge again. From the ramp. And then sustain it long enough to crash into that. If I'm remembering correctly. Which I might not be. No, it's kind of tricky. Because, yeah, you have to keep charging, otherwise you lose the supercharge and you can't steer quite as easily as you would when you're walking normally. It's doable though, I'm just having some trouble with it. Give it a few more shots. Um, I guess I'll wrap up this video pretty soon, because, yeah, we're, we're, making, we're making good progress this game. There we go, that's how you do it. Uh, I don't think we need a supercharge for anything else around here. We can grab a few more gems if we want. That's fine. Uh, you can see there's like a little cave hidden back here, which has the key in it. There we go, got the key. And there's Wizard Peak, which is another level we'll be visiting later. Not just yet though. Uh, I forget where the locked chest is. How are we doing? 98%. I'm guessing, guessing the only thing left we need to find is that locked chest at this point. Uh... Hmm. I think if we just finish off this hub world, that's a good way to finish off the video. If 
I can manage to find what I'm looking for within a reasonable amount of time, anyway. Ah! So yeah, that, that, that water does damage you, so you don't want to do what I'm doing now. Because it, it hurts. Sheepies! Yeah. Take that, sheepy. Interesting. I think I killed one sheep, but I went all the way from green to gold. Hmm. Okay, this is where you enter the world. Let's see. I don't actually know where the chest is. I've got the key for it, but I don't know where it is in order to unlock it with the key that I have. Um, you can't get on that ledge, so it can't be up there. There's Alpine Ridge. Let's, let's go up there and just have a look around behind it. See if there's anything in the spot. Nope, looks fine. Looks normal. Oh, hello. There's a, there's a doorway over there. Do you think I can glide to if I climb up here? Yeah, that should be enough height. Yeah. Okay, there's an extra life in here and the chest. And cool. Okay, so we've finished the hub here. We haven't gone to any of the levels yet, so we'll be doing that next. Yeah. Heck yeah. Woo. 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 <laughs> yeah, is that me? Thank you. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, well, that's it for this video. Next time we'll do some of the levels in Magic Crafters. Um, I guess we'll start with some of the earlier ones. This is the boss, probably the last one we'll be doing. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. 